57 hours running just the lights in here. So that's like a long weekend. Today, we're doing a special project, sort of like a glamper of sorts. This thing's gonna be luxury, portable, off-grid shelter. It's gonna have all the bells, all the whistles, everything you could possibly imagine you wanted or needed for camping. Uh-oh. I've got some regular size tires on. I took these tires off the sawmill because that's not going anywhere anytime soon. Matter of fact, I haven't moved it since I put it there years ago and it's a good idea to keep the tires out of the sun anyway so i took them off put them on the on the glamper that's the official the official title is the glamper so don's here he's gonna give me a hand with this thing we've got uh we're gonna take off a lot of the junk that uh is not required for the glamper like these side tie downs and the back tailgate before i get too far into this build this video is sponsored by jackery what you got there don uh-oh they want to clean your ducks, buddy. Probably. <laughs> LED submersible trailer lights. Hopefully we never have to take advantage of the submersible version of that. Got some caulking, some tape, some cut off wheels. I got an idea in my head. I've been saving panels, garage door panels. So they're the insulated uh, panels. I got aluminum, some sort of metal on both sides. And it's got styrofoam in the middle. And we're gonna, we're gonna stick those panels together and make this thing something. Now it's time to do some grinding. These are all garage door panels that were destined for the garbage. When you buy a new garage door, sometimes there's a, a, a scab on the tops and the bottom so they don't get dented. These are the scabs. So I've been collecting them over, you know, last eight months or something like that. So I've got quite a few of them. The whole structure is gonna be built out of garage door panels. As you can see, it's shaping up to be a really big box on wheels and it's all insulated. So you could, you know, fill this thing with ice, put your beers in there and you're good to go. We're gonna make the structure in such a fashion that it's watertight, airtight and it keeps your hot or your cold in depending on which climate you're using it because i want this to be an all season clamper this is the reinforcing piece punch out angle that we're using on all four corners in order to give us a little bit of rigidity and depending on on um then we may add some to the middle to give us a little bit more structure but as you can see the structure itself is coming along quite well well how's that for the biggest cooler on wheels They're calling for rain the next couple of days, so I want to make it watertight so the water doesn't get down the cracks. So basically, make like a fish tank. We're working on uh, the bump out here. So the, this is the I guess it's the back of the little glamper, and it, what it's going to do is it's going to house somewhat of a little wood stove. We got a cubic mini stove. It's coming. It's on its way. We're going to put it in this little bump out here, so it's going to be up a little bit higher, but we want to give it a little bit of space. So we're going to bump out about a foot and then carry on up. And that's going to give us all the space we need to have that. Maybe give us a little bit of shelf too for storage and whatnot. So now that we've got most of the walls up, we added punch out angle iron and the corners in order to facilitate our roof installation. So now we're going to work on our gable ends. And once we have the panels up enough, we're going to draw a line that goes to the peak and then we're going to cut it off in sort of an a-frame style which then we can install the roof on it well how's this for a comfy spot oh yeah you can already tell that it's going to be very cozy skies opened up it's decided to rain on us this thing's watertight it's going to fill up like a like a bucket you can kind of see it's shaping up you got the fireplace area over here and then you're going to have like a bed area here we just got to get a roof on we got to cut some windows in we got to cut some doors in still so like it's just we're we're making the box first and then we're going to cut all holes in it airiness it's kind of like inside of a igloo cooler and finally transport our human organs it's bright and spacious I'm just gonna crawl out maybe maybe i'm gonna crawl out. here you go don here's a camera it's still running okay there you go your first selfie buddy <laughs> that's not really what i wanted the chief inspector's here we got mark mark is the uh you've made a couple cameos on this yep he was just, he's getting off vacation and he came by to see what I was up to. 
So what do you think of this thing so far? I think it's, uh, I think it looks warm and cozy. It's a thing? It's a thing. Mm -hmm. I think it'll be a thing that anybody who puts their mind to it can build. Like, it's just like, it's like building a giant gingerbread house. Hansel and Gretel trailing behind? That's right. Yeah. Kind of, sort of. Maybe. Or it's like a big white van. We could have like a, a, a window at the side and you could sell popsicles out the thing. That's right. Get a little bell on it. Good idea. Except maybe kind of creepy. Kind of creepy. Yeah. This is the plan for my door. It is a two foot garage door panel and the idea is to sit it in here somewhere. Yet to be determined. I don't even have the size of the door. I got to cut it out still. So that's uh plan, plan, plan. I don't want to cut a hole in this thing and then it not fit. You're probably wondering how we're going to charge this thing. Well, this is the solution to the problem. This is the Jackery Explorer 1500. We're glamping. We're not taking away any luxuries. We're bringing them with us. This battery pack is perfect for glamping. It's not necessarily lightweight. It's not something you're gonna be putting in your backpack, but it's something that you can put in your car, in your trunk, take it out when you need it. It's all the power you need to power most anything you can think of. From a blender, a toaster, a refrigerator. Yeah, there's gonna be a refrigerator in this thing. We gotta power our lights. I've been using the Jackery the entire time I've been building this thing. From running a grinder, to a circular saw, to a table saw, this thing does it all. It's got 1800 watt of continuous usage with a surge capacity of 3600 watts. I've set the Jackery up with a maximum of four panels. You can set it up with as little as one panel. Each panel can produce 100 watts of power. You can pretty much plug in anything you can imagine. It's got DC voltage, so it's a regular cigarette lighter adapter. These are your inputs, so charger or regular house power to plug it in. You got your USB-C, so your phones or whatever, and then you got regular AC power, which you can plug your toaster in there or anything else you can imagine. And then the display shows you how much power you have left, 78%, and then input, which is how much is coming in, which is nothing, but output also says nothing. So when we plug something in, it'll actually tell you how much it's using and how long it has left to power that particular device. The input will tell you how much you're putting back into the battery from your solar panels. So guys, if you want to pick up one of these Jackery packs, the link will be in the description below. The problem I ran into is that the grinder wheel isn't quite deep enough to get all the way through. So I ended up using a zip cut or an oscillating tool and then I get to plunge into it. This isn't a, this isn't a metal blade, this is a wood blade. I lost a couple of teeth in that process, as you can see, but uh, this little tool is good for getting yourself out of some tricky situations. Oscillating tool, corner to corner and corner to corner and uh, cut it out. Oh yeah. Isn't that always the case? You get your cell all set up and then it starts raining and then you're like, oh, I'm gonna bring it inside. Bring it inside and then it stops raining. Now the sun's coming out, dry up all the rain. So to give you guys an update, the just taking the styrofoam out here in order to uh, give it some, a little bit more stability. We're gonna add some blocks in here and then the jam is going to attach it. We're gonna glue the blocks in. So it's gonna be all secured in, in one big monolithic slab. How's that for progress? I'm impressed with the fit of that door. It needs a little bit of tickle right here where it's gotta be cut down a little bit because it is touching the jam, but otherwise it fits great. And it doesn't just wing open because the hinges aren't quite designed. I was thinking of mortising the hinges and then I was like, well, you know what? A surface mount hinge is not a bad idea because we're gonna do our sheeting and we're gonna butt up against it. So it's gonna not be in the way. And then when it's fully open, it can be fully, fully open. And then you don't got anything here because I need to put in another lip here in order to actually hold the door closed and seal it shut. So the debate was, do we overhang the roof at the front and at the back to give us a little bit of thing? And then I was thinking, this thing's gonna travel at like 100 kilometers an hour, like, you know, 60 miles an hour? How, what's, what's miles in kilometers? It'll be 62. 62 miles, 62 miles an hour, 100 kilometers an hour. We probably don't want to lip at the front because otherwise the wind will come over and go underneath and try to rip our roof off, which, would probably not be ideal, right? That's right? Yeah, not ideal. So I'm thinking of doing a flush roof at the front and then overhang at the back 
because if it overhangs the back, it gives you kind of like a drip edge. So when you have your door open or, you know, it's not dripping inside. Right here is the greatest opportunity to use every spare tube of caulking you have laying around the house. I'm going around sealing up all the joints, cracks, crevices. This thing's gonna be watertight. And then after that, I'm gonna actually go around and use some either sheeting tape or blue skin at any of the major cracks, just to give it further waterproof because we don't want any water in this thing. Hear me? Oh yeah. Why is it a big dog house, hey? So now that we have our shell, we need to put a window. We need a couple of windows in here. So I got my, my lovely assistant handed me a window. So this is, this is obviously the outside of the window and this is the inside of the window. And what's cool about this window is that it was from an old camper. So it's already got the little slopiness in order for the water to kind of channel itself in and out if any water gets behind it. Really, I'm, what I'm debating is positioning of this thing. So if this is my bed, I'm, I'm sitting in my bed. You gotta use some imagination here. My bed's further over here. Uh, where do I want my window? I'll be able to open my window from here. Let's do that. What do you think of that? What do you think of that, guys? All right, now well, we cut from the outside. Oh yeah, test fit, see if it fits. Now, I just want to test fit it to make sure it fits because I'm going to put the cladding on first and then screw the whole window to the cladding. Oh, yeah. Is it a little house? Isn't it pretty cool, eh? For me. Yeah. I... Come on in. All right. We've got a little bench over there. We've got yeah. a little bench. It's coming along, eh? It's coming along. Hey, Don. Where, where's it going to be the bench when it's already Well, there's going to be a bed right over here. A bed? Yeah. It's nice and airy in here now. It's got windows. Well, it doesn't have the windows in yet, but it's got the holes. There's a great example of why you should always collect more of the old stuff than you think you need so we collected all the windows from the old camper that we had that we tore apart and the window that i wanted to use right here had the little mechanism this little guy here was uh the knob busted off so we ended up salvaging the knob from the old window the other old window and don carefully replaced it so we got the little crank out because i doubt you can find these little crank outs in the store anymore like from 1976 or something like that it's a uh, all cast aluminum This stuff is blue skin. If you don't want something to leak, stick this stuff to it. This is the stickiest, waterproofiest stuff in the world. It's got like a peel back and it's kind of like a tar based membrane. They use it for waterproofing foundations around windows when you're doing a, like a retrofit or even a brand new install. This stuff is like, this stuff's for life, but you can lap it over. It's got the little lines so you can lap it over to make a seamless joint. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually put it on the ridge of the glamper in order to prevent any water from infiltrating into the foam or down the crack. In order to install our fascia board, we ended up taking a little bit of styrofoam out of the panels, installing little blocks with glue, and then we attached our fascia board to the little blocks, and that gave us something secure to nail to. And the reason why we did that beforehand is because our roof sheeting is actually going to lap over top of it. Now, our roof sheeting isn't really designed for waterproofing. It's more of an aesthetic thing because our panels themselves are waterproof. Well guys, we're experiencing a little bit of a rain delay. These guys have opened up and it's decided to rain on me. But I can take this opportunity to check for leaks. If I look at the roof, I don't see any water coming in. Checking the cracks. There is a little bit of water coming in through the fact that there's no window here. So I can actually see it coming down and down the wall and then kind of pooling on the floor. So that seems to be the only source of the leak. I'm just checking the joints along the ridge cap and along the, where the seams are. And it seems to be Nice and dry. In order to cut the window into that door, I ended up taking the chunk of glass that I had and put it on the door, traced around the circle. And then what I did is I gave it a little bit of meat because I want to put a frame around the window. So then what I did was I grinded that out and then I used a drill and poked all the way through and then transferred the marks to the other side. 
the grouting wheels that I have aren't thick enough that go through both pieces of material at once. So once you transfer it to the other side, you disconnect the dots, fa la 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 la, and you've got a nice circle for your window. Now all I've got to do is figure out some way in order to enclose kind of where the styrofoam, the raw styrofoam is inside the panel. So I think I'm going to try some wood. I like bending wood. Let's see if we can get it thin enough to actually get around the perimeter of the opening. In order to make the frame on the window, I ended up using really thin pieces of wood, and then I ended up wetting them in order for them to bend and not break. After that, I used pieces of black pipe I had laying around in order to frame the window, and then simply silicone it all in place in order to hold it onto the door. Now that we've got that all siliconed up, we just gotta wait for it to dry, and I'll probably end up putting a couple of more brackets around it just to firmly secure the window in place, because we don't want that falling off while we're driving. The siding and roofing material on the clamper is being installed first with construction adhesive and second with mechanical fasteners. So every couple of inches we're installing a screw in order to ensure our siding does not fly off at highway speeds. This siding is going to be experiencing tornado-like winds, 100 km an hour, you know, gusts traveling down the highway. Because the last thing we want is a piece of siding flying off before we get to our final destination. That's both, well, dangerous and embarrassing. All right, there it is. It's cedar, clear cedar. It'll gray up over time once it weathers. I don't like to put any finish on it because, uh, well, I like when it turns gray. So we just got the front and we've got, uh, I guess the roof, we, got, we ran out of pieces for there. So we're gonna mill up some more for that guy, but no big deal. We're going to finish the front. Turns out Zach over at Fowler's Makery and Mischief is also building a camper. So we're gonna have a little bit of a friendly competition. So I want you guys to go check out his. It's at Fowler's Makery and Mischief. Go take a look at his build. And then I want you to come back here and comment who won, who won the build off of this micro glamper. All right, so my plan is to make an accent wall at the back wall where my fireplace is going. And what I'm gonna use is this old scraps of hardwood floor. It's engineered so it's to withstand the heating and the cooling process and the humidity and all that good stuff. So it is a, it's about four and a half inches wide by about a half inch thick, but it is engineered. That'll go on my back wall and that'll give me a really pretty accent wall. I'm having to chisel out the back of them because there's uh, the tech screws that are holding the metal brackets up. So that's taken a little while, but I'm almost done. This little guy is the mini cubic stove. This is the cub version of this stove. It's great for heating small spaces. Whenever I build a small space, I, I used to have a hard time finding a stove that would actually, you know, not overheat the space. And this is the perfect solution to that. Like if you have a camper or like a, a boat, or like if you're, you know, converting a shipping container or something like that, this little guy here is ideal for heating such a small space because you don't want to overheat it. The neat thing about this is it actually takes tiny little wood, like five inch wood, cordwood, trees, dried sticks, refuse from building or whatever you got, produces a very even clean heat. It's got the huge viewing window. You can see your fire crackling. It acts as like an ambiance in the space. Design and function comes together. It's, it's awesome. So the other cool thing about this stove is it comes with every accessory you could possibly need to install it in any space you have. This particular guy here is a wall bracket. It allows you to have the clearance off of a combustible surface. It also comes with side heat shields if you need to install it closer to a side wall or to another side wall. You can purchase them as you go. Depending on how high you want to go, you can just purchase a la carte chimney sections to go up higher. And it, the great thing about this stuff is it's all stainless steel. It'll probably last forever. Original manufacturer instructions on the clearance to the side of this guy is 20 inches unless you have a side heat shield, which we do. Once we put this guy here, it'll reduce our clearance on this side down to three inches. What do you guys think? That looks like a pretty nice spot for that. Because when it opens up, you can see, you can have your little box of wood right here. You're actually not above anything else that's combustible. That there is the spot, I think, right there. Chimney clearance, it's not gonna be in the seam. 
This is the rear heat shield for the chimney pipe. So this goes here and the chimney pipe goes in front of it and that protects the back wall from the pipe. This particular pipe we're using is double wall so it's got very little clearance issues. These stovepipes are some of the nicest stovepipes I've ever seen. They're stainless steel inside and out. These are pipes that are probably last forever because traditional pipe is made of mild steel and then they paint it black. And usually what happens is over the summertime, the condensation goes inside and it rusts, but these guys pipe for life. Well, we're moving on to my favorite part, which is interior finishing. This is what I'm, you know, formally trained at is interior finishing. I don't really do most of the outside stuff. This is more, this is my home, it's the inside stuff. I'm good at doing inside stuff. Well, at least I think I am. Anyway, so we're doing some trim. I've got some uh, old school trim from the 1950s laying around. So what better time to use them than on my window casings and baseboards and trimming and stuff like that. So I've got some, you know, some gaps between the panels and, and there's some metal edging and stuff like that that I'm just gonna cover over because uh, it make it purely aesthetic. It's uh, more so than anything else. And then I'm just gonna give it some paint and it's gonna look like a million bucks. I think it already looks like a million bucks. It's pretty, it's coming together. Moving right along, we got our flooring. This is sheet vinyl. I picked it up from my local flooring supplier. Bigelow flooring. Thanks, Bigelow. If you ever need a really small piece of flooring, usually if you go into a big giant store, they got stuff laying around. You toss them a couple of bucks and they're, they're more than happy to get rid of old stock. So this is a piece of old stock. It happens to be the same stuff as we use in our giant cabin over there. So this stuff's neat. I actually got them to cut it to size. Just a smidge. There, oh, too much. Too much, here we go. I say we don't even glue that thing down. I say we put baseboard down and that's gonna hold it in place. My original plan was to silicone all the way around the perimeter and we're getting there. We need um, outlet power. We need to figure out where everything goes. We've got some LED panel lights that I'm gonna fix up in the ceiling. Thinking of a piece of wood and then I'm gonna cut it in and then probably recess it in the ceiling. Well, that's exciting. We're making progress. Look at that light. That's a beautiful light. We got the interior lighting done and uh, that's all plugged in to my Jackery. My Jackery is currently uh, being housed in my shop. So I've got my extension cord plugged in my Jackery. What am I at? What am I at? 81%, 81% for the entire build so far. This whole shop's actually run on the uh, on the Jackery pack right now. We're, we're drawing 61, 61 watts, which is AC, which you can see got my accent lighting in my shop. And yeah, so that's, that's that. And it's powering the entire inside of the cabin. Look at that. That's that's pretty cool. We got some tidying up to do still on the wires, but uh, as you can see, you got the, the, ooh, the dim oh, accent lighting. So I'm trying to figure out where exactly I want to put this battery. It, it'll fit back on that back wall on the little shelf there, but I think it'll be a little bit too far to actually plug stuff in. So ideally, we can put it underneath the bed. Got a long cord. Actually, I could put the battery out outside and then have the solar panels ideally in the sunshine and uh, have it charged up while I'm while I'm running stuff, so. We got the Jackery all in place. Now we're just setting the height of the bed. We've got to get a couple things set in here. This is our fridge. We'll get a little bit more on this a little bit later, but it does uh, plug into the Jackery through a uh, cigarette lighter adapter. So I want to make sure it's tall enough, the bed's tall enough to actually get the, the fridge underneath it. So this is our, this is, seems to be our good height. Now we just got to secure this to it and uh, put our bed on hinges so it'll fold up in and out of the way when we're not sleeping. How's that for bed? Fold away, everything, it's like a Murphy bed. We got a couple more pieces of trim to put on and then we got some more features we're gonna install this thing because this thing's getting glamorous real fast. So because this is a glamper, we're gonna make this thing fancy. We're gonna install some baseboard and because it's rattling around a lot, we're actually gluing everything. But if you're gonna do this in your house, just don't glue it. Cause it might be you taking the baseboard off and it's not fun taking baseboard off that's glued. It's kind of a permanent thing. We're using PL premium for this guy. We're gonna glue it on, we're gonna tack it on. The nails are holding it temporarily. 
until the glue sets up because this the nails kind of pull out of the aluminum. But once that glue sets up, that stuff going nowhere. All right, we're at the stage where we're adding some features. And this is one of the features that I've added is a fold up shelf. This is our cook station here and it allows us to give us a nice, nice countertop from one side all the way to the other. We're probably going to install some hooks up here to hold pots and pans and whatnot. Because once you've got this thing in place, you're going to stay there probably for a little while. When you're traveling, you fold it up. This block tucks inside. And when you're ready to cook, fold it down, ready to go. The only thing we haven't quite figured out yet is how to hold it up while traveling. So I'm thinking of like a like a latch. What's that thing called, Don? Hasp. Hasp. We got a hasp. We got a couple of hasps, but we can we lock it in place maybe with a little, little latch. We don't have those with us. So probably in the future, we're gonna make sure that there's a couple of hasps to hold that thing in place while we're traveling. All right, so once we're in here, we can fold down our bed. We don't have our mattress topper on here right now, but we can sit down here and then we can fold up our desk. We've got our fancy little stick. It sits in this back little bracket here. And now we've got a nice little workstation for our laptop. And it's even got, like, it's, it's a nice size too. You can look out the window, stoke your fire. This is like home office. This is clamping. And when it's raining and you need a place to hang out, from the rain you can always open your window you can listen to the rain on the tin roof you can work on your laptop you can watch a movie you can, you can read your book here actually you're probably laying down when you're reading your book but it's a good little workstation you can have your coffee here this is this is a great little this is a great little spot so this here is our board for hanging our cooking utensils once we're parked because we're gonna have a cook surface down right here. So let's just attach this to the wall. We've got our glue so it doesn't fly off at 100 kilometers an hour. Now we can add our micro cast iron. This is a great for cooking an egg sandwich. We got there and we've got a little micro grilled cheese iron. Is that a waffle iron? We could waffle iron, grilled cheese iron, hang it there. When we're parked, we probably shouldn't travel with these like this, but when we're stationary and we're ready to cook, pull this off. Put it on our cook station and away we go. We're done, hang them up. Don made me a couple of nice storage boxes that uh, will double as seats inside here. So you can turn them up on the side, you have a place to sit. Uh, and then when you're traveling, you just kind of put your stuff in there. So that guy goes underneath, goes underneath there. And there's two, double the storage. Hello pillows, storage, firewood in there. That's the idea behind that. I think we're pretty much buttoned up. I don't know. I think we gotta, gotta give the, to the stove a little test fire just to make sure that's uh, safe. We're gonna put some, uh, we got a little kindling, some little, uh, again, this is, this is my test fire. It's pretty warm out today. I don't need too much of a fire. And uh, quite honestly, I don't think you're gonna need much of a fire in here anyways, because this is a very small space. Just load her up like you would a traditional fireplace. I think the wood is about five inches wide. Guy's a little small. That guy's a little wet. We'll just throw that out the window. All right. So, and then my traditional lighter up. What's really neat about this stove is the amount of draft it gets. This is the front damper. So we open that up, and it sucks air in through the front. And uh, there's a rear damper at the back, so you can adjust the flow from both sides of the stove. It pulls air in from underneath or in from the front. This is the initial fire. Anytime you get a heating appliance, it's always good to do an initial fire with all the windows and doors open because at the factory they're painted and uh, you want to kind of cure that paint. So let that guy go, test fire. So far, so good. I want you to head over to Zach Fowler's page. It's Fowler's Makery and Mischief and he's building a camper as well. We're having kind of like a friendly competition of sorts. So uh, I want you to check out his build and I want you to come back here and comment who won the build off. You know, friendly competition is always good. Now let's take you on a tour of the inside. Let's start on the outside. We got our coat hook for hanging up our coats. We've got our exterior lighting that'll allow us to see in the dark when we uh, when we want to do stuff on the outside. So crawling in, we've got our, our dimmer. We, got, we, can, we can dim the lights. Dim the lights so we can, you know, nighttime, whatever. You got the outside lights. 
come on in. We've got our bed. Nice comfortable bed. We've got our nice pillows. We've got our fold out shelf and then you can put your laptop or whatnot on it. It's a fireplace tool so I want to poke the stove. What's neat about this little stove is you can actually cook on top of it. Like other my little, little coffee perk sits right on top of there. And everything folds down to get out of the way when you don't need it. So when you're done sleeping, you get out of bed, you make your bed, fold it up. This little foot folds up with it and you clip it. We've got some storage on the bottom, some pillows. And it doubles as a seat. If you need a little bit more space, maybe you're not sleeping, maybe you're just hanging out here because it's raining. You get to hang out here. You got your benches. And this is a 12 volt DC refrigerator. It's made by a company called Joy Tutu. It's actually really, it's really handy because you can keep your drinks in here and keep everything cold. Your food, your, your meats, soft drinks, all that sort of stuff. I'll put a link in the description below for that fridge. It's really cool. You can put it in your camper or, or in your truck or your car. And it's like I said, DC voltage plugs in. And then we got the, the power pack on this guy is the, uh, the Jackery Explorer 1500. And uh, we've been using this thing for the entire build and we're currently at 41%. It'll do line voltage, which is AC power. It'll do DC simultaneously. It'll charge your phones. You've got your USB ports on that thing. And uh, what the other thing is what we got hooked up on the roof is the solar panels. Now these things, you can buy them extra with the uh, with a Jackery, but it charges the battery pack. Once you get to your location, you hook these guys up on the roof. It trickle charges your battery during the day. And then you got power all, all night to use. This is our little cook station here. It folds down and then when you don't want it, you fold it back up. We've got our little hanging things for our pots and pans. You can hook it up to a small car, truck, whatever you got. I think it'll, you know, a little Toyota can pull this bad boy. So. Anyways, there you go. Exterior lighting. Things got everything. Well guys, that wraps it up for me today. I hope you guys join me on the next one where we take this thing out on its maiden voyage.